your online resource for cacti bulbs and succulents. Got another package here. This is a second unboxing from David Neville, trading a Solent guy. And I suppose the fact that it's a second re unboxing tells you something, doesn't it? Quality plants last time. Now let's see what David's managed to send us this time round. So again, excellent sturdy box which has uh, managed to get through the postal system almost completely unscathed and the plants are very well packed and surrounded and cushioned by copious amounts of newspaper and let's get a, a little bit of an advance notice of what might be in here Ah, okay. Okay, so we have three plants in here, each individually wrapped. We'll save that box for later because you never know, it might come in handy. And the first plant is a, a succulent about which there is a certain amount of controversy. But this is definitely the pure species of Allojuvena, a shortly columnar growing species, so not the normal rosetti form, a ground hugging dwarf aloe, but very much a dwarf aloe, never grows more then about an inch and a half, two inches across, with the leaves arranged in a very distinct five symmetrical pattern. So pentasymmetrical, very much like a Hawarthia or Astrolaba. As you can see, this one's clustering nicely. There's already a juvenile coming up at the side. So this is Allo Juvena, and we have a, another video coming up soon about the Allo Juvena Allo Squarosa controversy. There are a few things that could be more exciting. Right, what else do we have? Right, now we do have a small collection of this genus already, and it is one of my favourite genus or genera of South American cacti. And I have a few plants which are quite closely related to this. But this is a, an absolutely beautiful little specimen. It really is. Not a, a single mark of any kind. Symmetrical ribs. Perfect spines. And this is Gymnocalyceum triacanthum. So I don't know how good a view you can get in the camera there. Very nicely formed root ball, the taproot forming species, so a small taproot underneath to store moisture, and that lovely grey green colour that always attracts me in some South American cacti like Neoporteria, Neochelenia, um, Copiapoa is an obvious example, and some of the Silcorebutias. So Gymnocalyceum triacanthum, beautiful, beautiful specimen there. And finally, we have a plant which I do have in terms of species, but this is a very different form. So, it doesn't have a Latin name, not one that I'm aware of, but it does reside under the subriquet of Copiapoa hypogea, inverted commas, lizard skin. And that's because the skin, as opposed to the normal or more common Copiapoa hypogea is actually rugose. Now rugose is a, a botanical term meaning rough or um, lined or striated. Uh, so lizard skin is not a bad example. So it hasn't got the smooth epidermis, the outer skin of the normal Copiapoa. Now you can see very distinctly there the tap root which is the main 
body of the plant in these uh, geophytic cop copiopoas. Now if this plant isn't watered or if it's planted too high this root is actually contractile and it will pull the plant back down into the soil. So you can't artificially display it like a cactus bonsai and have it sticking out the ground by an inch because over time it will just pull itself down. So Copiapoa hypogea lizard skin. Now we'll do a little uh, repotting exercise about this one a little bit later. So nice short video for you from Kirkstone this morning. Three beautiful specimen plants from David Neville who trades as Solent Guy on eBay UK. So make sure you check out Solent Guy on eBay for real quality delivery. Thanks very much for watching and that's all from Kirkstone for now. Bye bye for now. Good morning and welcome back to Kirkstone. Yesterday morning we looked at the unboxing of some plants that arrived from Plant Life Centre. Um, this is a small, rather beautiful in my opinion, Copiapoa hypogea. And this is the former, not quite a variety, but the former known as lizard skin. Now, I don't know how uh, closely you can see that, but this is the former of the Copiapoa hypogea taxon it has a rough rugose greeny brown skin so the epidermis is distinctly squamous some great botanical words coming out here so the skin looks as if it's lizard like or snake like the skin and it's a very apt uh, descriptive metaphor now you can also see that this plant has a very well developed tap root okay so this is a contractile tap root as I said in the last video that featured Copiapoa hypogea, that this is a plant which will pull itself back down into the ground, okay, if it feels that it's too uh, exposed to the elements. So in its natural habitat in Chile, this plant will actually grow flush to the surface of the desert. So only the very top of the plant would be exposed. It would never stick up out of the ground. There's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, because it minimises water loss through the skin. And secondly, of course, to protect it against predators. It's not as obvious a food source as it would be as if it was sticking out. Okay, so a very quick procedure. I've got a smallish pot here. And into this pot, I'm going to place about a half to a third of an inch of humus material. So this is a peat-based material, in this case, Jack's Magic. And in the bottom of that, I'm going to place a very small amount of Grow More Fertiliser, which I'm going to stir in with my finger and break up any particles of compost while I'm there. Now the main body of the plant is going to be growing in a 1 1 1 25% 25% 25% 25% mix of my normal uh, free draining compost. And this is simply one part uh, peat based compost. Any proprietary compost will do. It's one part 10 to 20 millimeter size small pebbles. It's one part smaller pebbles or horticultural grit. And it's one part special horticultural sand. So the obvious thing to do then is to try and work out roughly where our new copia pole is going to sit in the pot and then fill in around that lovely well-developed tap root making sure that the plant stays positioned as much as possible in the center of the pot so that when we come to move it later and there we are, see? So although we've only potted up a third of the taproot so far, the taproot itself is strong enough and robust to actually support the plant. So that's key to understanding the development and cultivation needs of this particular plant. It's all about the taproot. So I'll continue to fill in quite a long way up. Okay, 
So I make sure I maintain the position of the plant in the centre with this magic one finger, a controlling finger. And I'll tap around. So nearly there. There we are, we're pretty much there now. I can still see a tiny bit of the tap root, about an eighth of an inch, but that's fine because we're actually going to fill in that space with our normal topping mixture of that smaller size horticultural grit. So the particle size here is round about five millimeter average. So none smaller than three and none bigger than about eight millimeters. So all that's required now is to tap down that and settle. Now the plant root itself will pull it down into the ground to a position where it feels is right. So I don't need to worry too much about that. So it's sitting a little bit proud at present, but the plant itself will determine its ideal growing position. And there we are. Copiapoa hypogea forma lizard skin. Ready to go and join the other Copiapoas, Ariosis, Sulcorobutia, Neopoteria, Neochelenia, and the other choice small growing specimens, not to forget Gymnocolysium, on the cactus side of the greenhouse. I hope you've enjoyed this very quick potting up of Copiapoa hypogea. I really love the genus Copiapoa and uh, I think you'll notice that as the blog develops over time. Copiapoa and Areocarpus are absolutely where it's at as far as I'm concerned in the cactus world. So there'll be some more pictures of this going up on the Instagram account Kirkstone Botanica 2007 and there will be some updates on the plant's development over time on our Facebook page at Kirkstone Botanica on Facebook. And uh, we also have a Twitter account, but as I've said before, I don't really see the relevance of Twitter for us right now. But the other two social media outlets, please keep tuned, please check in regularly. There's something going up absolutely every day in the greenhouse to do with cacti, succulents, other geophytes, Corduciform, pachycols, ferns, aroids, uh, have I forgotten anything? Cycads. So check back for all your horticultural fix and we'll help you all out as much as you can. Please like on Facebook, please follow on Instagram, but most importantly of all, please subscribe on the YouTube channel because we want to keep these pictures coming to you and these updated video blogs on cactus, succulent and bulb cultivation. So it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Copiapoa, Hypogea, the lizard skin form. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. taking a very first look at my cactus collection. I've been growing cacti for about um, 50 years and at uh, different times in my life. I've had uh, periods where I've been less interested and got involved in other things and periods of time like the last three years where I have become more interested in investing time in the cacti and uh, we also have uh, here in this greenhouse uh, a collection of bulbs and also a collection of succulent plants 
which is why uh, the channel is called Cacti Bulbs and Succulents because there are about um, the same number probably of cacti and bulbs and succulents uh, in the greenhouse so I don't know how many cacti there are here there are probably about ooh, what do you know 150 200 cacti maybe um, and probably they're more or less equally balanced between South American and North American cacti. So the area that we're looking at now is the smaller growing South American cacti which feature a range of um, species and genera different kinds of plants from different areas from Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Chile and from uh, Peru quite a lot of plants from Peru but mostly these are plants from the large dry savanna areas between Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil and Argentina so we have a lot of plants here which are adapted to quite dry conditions but also plants which have also adapted to grow in a certain amount of shade. So the area that we're scanning down now is basically the Gymnocolysium section here. And also there are some other plants here which uh, are notocactus which are now in parodia and also some copiapoa and towards the back of this section there are also some North American cacti uh, mostly from astrophytum and ferrocactus but also some echinocactus and a few others. So this is basically the Gymnocolysium section which is in two halves. There's that section there and then further along there's also that section there and then behind the Gymnocolysium section we have some ferrocactus of different types and also quite a collection of astrophytum and their relatives like this Leuchtenbergia principis. This is uh, Weingartia, Weingartia lanata, and more Gymnocolysiums. And these are the slightly larger Gymnocolysiums here in the collection. This is one of my favourite plants here, this Gymnocolysium baldianum. I really like the, the dark green and the, the shorter spines. And then there's a, the parodia section. So we have a, a few little plants here of parodia. Parodia submammulosa. And this is another group of plants that used to be known as Wigginsia but have now been joined in along with the other notocactus plants into Parodia. So this is Parodia Salawi, this is Parodia Microsperma, this is Parodia Roseolutea 
and this three-headed plant here is Parodia conchina. And this is Parodia turbinata. And you can see it uh, flowered quite recently and the flowers became fruit and the fruit are just now spilling the seeds out from the uh, woolly capsules which the fruit is made of. And this is also a multi-headed plant because there are three offsets just forming there now. So that's the parodia. So towards the back, larger growing plants like Ferrocactus gracilis and Ferrocactus stainesi and other Ferrocacti of different types, including this Ferrocactus hystrix, which again is a three headed plant, and the Ferrocactus glaucescens, and one of the two large Astrophytums. Now this is Astrophytum ornatum, this large plant here. And that's a first look at that half of the collection.